Welcome to the Green Wisdom Health Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. Hello and welcome to this week's show. So glad you could join us today. We are doing a show about memory loss or memory prevention uh, called My Memory is So Bad I Could Plan My Own Surprise Party. Dr. Lewis came up with that little tricky uh, title. So I forgot it for a while. (laughs) We hope you're going to be pleased with the show. Uh, First off, we would like to thank you and explain to you a little bit about the changes that are taking place at our store. Um, We're quite excited. Uh, We're going to be able to offer you a variety of so many more ideas uh, as they come along where we have many things in the works, but um, only a few right now that we actually have going. But um, basically what we've done is we've changed our, our, name of our store, our show title, which you've probably seen, from Doctors Nutrition to Pro Health IQ. Uh, we are no longer part of their franchise, and uh, now we have the ability to add different lines of products. Dr. Lewis, would you like to explain? I thought you just did, but I mean, uh, you know, Doctors Nutrition was uh, uh, the brainchild of a friend of mine, Dr. Jim Fox, and his wife, Dr. Janine Fox. They're really, really good people, very brilliant, and they taught us a lot. We're very grateful, but Janet and I had some different ideas and wanted to kind of go in a little bit different direction. So, you know, as Janet said, we're now able to offer a much wider variety of supplements, which has a greater availability, greater absorbability, and the stuff we were selling was absolutely incredible. Uh, but most of these uh, will give you better absorbability, fewer pills, and the large majority of them is actually going to be less money. Uh, we've already gotten some really good reports about the changes that we're making there, and thank you very much for the people that uh, have been very patient throughout this switch because there's been a little bit of patience needed. Uh, we have some absolutely awesome people. And I tell people every day, direction is more important than speed. So once we get you on the right direction, it's just important that you stick with it. And we have a very high percentage of people that stick with it uh, long enough to get good results. But I thought uh, this memory thing would be good to go over and talk about, you know, how to prevent memory loss or how to restore memory. I think we've experienced it as going through all this change of what a good mind we needed to have in order to make differences in people's uh, lives and health and make sure they had all of their uh, adequate supply of stock on the different products. It's uh, been quite a mind challenge for me. So I've been taking extra memory things. So maybe that's why Dr. Lewis decided to uh, make a show because he saw how much I needed my mind to keep this going. And she's been relatively... uh She's handled her stress very nicely. She's never yelled at me or been mean to me. (laughs) And you folks have to realize that, yeah, I'm the doctor, but I promise you, Janet, it's a very large majority of why this place runs as good as it does. And, you know, the things she does, she knows her lab work as well as I do, but she does things that I'm not smart enough to do because I don't want to get that deep into computers. And so maybe it's because I'm not smart enough. Maybe it's because I refuse and I, I like being a dinosaur. I can get on there and do the real research, not this Google opinion stuff that most people read and think it's research. But I can do that. But I I don't want to be drugged into the 21st century. I'm just really happy that she drove me into the 20th century. So she is very, very brilliant. Uh, it's made a big, big difference. And I'm, I'm going to throw a lot of ideas out here about uh, memory. Uh, you know, is it memory loss? Is it dementia? Is it Alzheimer's? And, you know, if it's already real serious, I always suggest that you see a good neurologist. Uh, there are so many things that they can do. And one of the first things they do is put you on a ketogenic diet. Well, my thing is, well, if it's good for your brain, why the heck is America not on a ketogenic diet anyway? So... Uh, we're a nation full of carbohydrate and or sugar addicts. And now the last lady I talked to, her blood sugar was, her glucose was 193. Her A1C was 7.8. And it's like, man, we can do better than this. So, so there's so many different things. So 
people get these uh, forgetful moments, and we just laugh about them, call them senior moments. And most of the time, it is a pretty innocent and not a, a big problem. It's because of the stress of, say, the, the change. Janet's like, oh, what did I come in here for? And Janet's much younger and prettier than me. So I know it's just the stress that's been going on. Uh, you know, what I noticed that I do, and I, I'm sure I'm the only one that does this, but <laughs> I have to actually lay things out in places so I'll remember that I need to see them again. Because if it's now to the point that if I don't put it out somewhere, I'm not going to remember I'm supposed to go back and do anything with it. And sometimes I still leave it there. <laughs> and that's the thing. So be nice to yourself because you know, folks, that it's just because we've become a nation where, well, we're hooked on sugar and carbohydrates, which does not fuel our brain correctly. We, we're eating foods that are nutrient uh, depleted. And we have too much information going on. And that's true even of our kids. You know, we put them in front of an iPad or, you know, all those electronic devices, which is not good for us. So we have too much information going on and not enough sitting by the creek and, you know, sticking your toes into the river and, you know, letting your troubles wash away. We need more downtime than what we're getting. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just overload. So your brain tries it's a self-defense mechanism to kind of check out uh janet told me yesterday i was checked out and it's like she said are you taking your it's a high dose of b12 5 mthf and that's something. methyl cpg and that's uh, see he well, remembered the name he just didn't want to tell you well, <laughs> okay. no actually i didn't but uh, janet knows when i don't take that one particular one because that helps fuel the brain and she can tell with decreased cognitive function if I've not taken it one pill per day. And, folks, you don't always start with that one. That's kind of the big kahuna. Uh, so that's one of the things. Uh, and, and, you know, there was a research article I read the other day that most people fear losing their mental capacity more than they fear losing their phys physical ability. And if you want to find out if you have those genetic predispositions, you can go to 23andMe and do their genetic testing. Um, that's They came back when I did it and said, well, you have the tendency toward dementia and Alzheimer's. And I would, duh, look at my 90-something-year-old mother. You can tell that. But between me and Janet and my brother, Dr. James Lewis, we threw so many supplements at my mother for so many years that we slowed down her cognitive decline by about 20 to 25 years. And dementia did not get her until she got about 92. And it started going downhill pretty fast. But hey, 92 is better than, you know, we could see it coming when she was in her 60s. Uh, <clears throat> so the neuroscientists call this maladaptive brain activity, these so-called senior moments. Well, have you ever noticed there's more ADD, ADHD in children? Well, it's because of too much information, not enough proper nutrition for the kids' brains to function correctly. Uh, so, you know, it's not that big a deal that you send an email to the wrong person or you forget to email because we have too much of it to do. Uh, so as we get older, though, they say, well, memory loss can be a disease of aging. And I disagree with that. It's not really a aging thing. It's because we've had another decade or two or three decades to accumulate toxins. Those of you that have used our services know I always talk about the plastics and the phthalates and the fire retardants, the benzenes, the trichloroethanes, and a million things I can't even pronounce. You have to up your nutrient levels so that you increase your different detoxification pathways so that your body can get rid of this. Don't wait until you have a bad disease to say, hey, can you fix this? Why didn't you work on it 20 years ago? And I see so many people, and this is a recent thing, but I see people that are in the obituaries that are much younger than me, and it's like, well, you know, I gave her the answer 20 years ago. But she never loved herself enough to do it. And it, it saddens me that people don't have enough self-love to find a program and stick with it. And, and again, we do have a very high percentage of people that stick with it. So thank you very much. We're very grateful that we can be a part of it. On the memory loss, the things that I think you should begin to worry about and perhaps you know, make steps toward us uh, when your ability to function or, or, or say, live independently 
when it becomes a problem, it could be dementia. And, and again, it's better to start it many decades before it gets to be a problem. But uh, that, that is a genetic problem, correct? Or is it not? It can be. Okay. It can be so many different things. Yes, it very much can be. Well, I know that we always uh, have people do a test called 23andMe, which is something that's pretty inexpensive. It's a spit test that you can literally go online and look it up. Um, but it tells you if you have some of those inherent weaknesses as well so that you can start planning and realize, yeah, hey, yeah, maybe I did inherit a strand that wasn't so great that I need to be taking something for. And folks, she didn't, she didn't forget that I've already said that. She just went into a lot more detail about it because Janet's the detail person. I'm more like flying up in the sky like a hawk looking down at the big picture. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things is when you start repeating the same question over and over again, and, you know, Janet said the other day, about a week or two ago, says, Stephen Lewis, you don't even listen to me. I said, what do you mean? She said, you've asked me that question three times. I said, I don't remember what was the answer. And she was right. She did uh, repeat herself because I kept asking the same question. And it's not because I had dementia. It's because I'm such an attentive husband. I just say, yes, ma'am. and didn't even listen to her answer. So I was just being a yes, man. I can't even get a rise out of her. <laughs> Uh, difficulty making choices, sometimes that can be the onset of dementia, but that can also be depression, also the inability to make a decision. But then there's another factor you have to think about is like people that are perfectionist, they want to make a perfect decision. Therefore, they many times don't even make a decision because they can't make it perfectly. And I used to be guilty of that. And then I went through a lot of neurolinguistic programming to get to where I was not. A perfectionist, perfectionist, perfectionist. If you look at my desk, you could say, wow, he's really slipped out of that perfectionist mode because it looks like a grenade went off. But I know where everything is in its perfect little pile. <laughs> Much to the dismay of Janet and everybody around me. Um, sometimes you can spot dementia when you start making uh very inappropriate social behaviors. And, you know, I put a note here. It's like, you know, a dirty old man. It's like, you know, why is it that old men seem to get more bold with some of the things they say and do? And it's like, I don't think that's appropriate. So, man, thank goodness it's only a small percentage. I always thought they did that because they thought they could get by with it because they were close to heaven's pearly gates. Well, if you do it to my kids, <laughs> I'm going to send you to the pearly gates. <laughs> Uh, that's just not right, uh, some of the things that's going on. So there really could be a mind problem in there as well. It's not just being perverted. Mm, could be either one or, okay. or both. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, if your husband or wife has a major change in personality, you might want to take them, uh, you know, get some help maybe from the neurologist uh, or, or put them on some stuff. And again, put them on the right nutrition before it gets to be a problem. Uh, loss of interest in uh, things that you've loved for many years. Janet told me one time I was depressed. I said, I don't think so. Why? She says, you don't go to gun shows. You don't buy guns anymore. It's like, well, geez, how many do you need? And she says, how many pairs of shoes do I need? And it's like, okay, got it. Uh, now I just buy guns for grandkids. <laughs> I hadn't lost uh I really hadn't lost interest in it. I just don't like shooting anything anymore. It's like, okay, well, maybe I lost interest in that. I don't know. Uh, here, Here's one that's a note that kind of hits close to home. When you have a memory lapse that puts people in danger, like leaving the stove on. And I did that last month. I was boiling eggs, and Janet says, you know, you boiled them dry and left the burner going. It's like, she's right. I actually did. Again, I think it's because I was doing too much. You know, how many of you go to do one thing and then you get diverted with three different projects and forget the original one? Is what that, he's doing is solving everyone's lab in his mind while he's actually physically standing and doing something else. I've been doing that since 4.30 <laughs> a.m. this morning, and I've been wide awake since then. So uh, we're we're going to change the model of what our business is somewhat because we're so blooming busy. There's so many people that want this, so many people that need help. And Janet and I are going to raise our expectations and take the task and help more people because it's, for goodness sake, it's going that way in a big way. 
Um, but if you talk to somebody about uh, their memory problem and they get angry, that's a really good sign. You might need to pay attention to that. Um, so, you know, it's okay to forget, have those so-called senior moments that we can make fun of. But some of the things you can do, uh, I think the ketogenic diet is first and foremost. And if all of us went on a ketogenic diet, first of all, the government would probably quit subsidizing all those things that are killing us, like soy, corn, and wheat. You should avoid those like the plague. Uh, one of the things you can take is the ginkgo, but... You know, if you have a bleeding problem or you're about to have a, you know, a surgery or dental work, you want to get off of that because it'll cause you to bleed a little bit too much. You have to watch that because sometimes it'll raise your blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure, don't do that. But ginkgo kind of goes back to what George Carlin said. If you can remember to take your ginkgo, do you really need it? Uh, I think the first thing you should do is a good quality fish oil. And most of it's not good quality. When you say good quality, what exactly are you looking for in it or or making sure that it's more importantly not in it? Maybe that's a better way to put it. You can't always tell because um, we get this a lot. And there was the, the representative of a very large company that I will not name the name uh, called Janet last June and says, we know this is the most counterfeited uh, supplement on Amazon. And she says, we just can't be responsible for it. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of counterfeiting going on, uh, according to people that are more into the investigation than me. Uh, people that have worked for the FDA say that's true. Uh, so you can't really tell by the label. How many of you have had a date with somebody and they weren't what they appeared to be? Uh, yeah, supplements are the same way. So you have to find a source that you trust. And, you know, Janet told this lady, so well, we don't buy it off Amazon. And even last week, one of my long-term uh, consumers of what we've been doing, really, really nice young man, I, I like talking to him. We were in the midst of this, and we were super, super busy. And he was wearing Janet out with uh, emails and says, well, every time I take selenium, I get nauseous. And Janet says, well, okay, well, send us a picture of the expiration date and the lot number. And when he did, it's like, well, that's not our product. And he says, oh, excuse me, I got it off Amazon. And me being who I am, you know, always a sweet, kind-hearted Christian, I said, well, number one source of counterfeited products is Amazon, just saying. And I didn't mean to hurt his feelings and hope I didn't. Uh, one of the things, you know, we're dealing with some of the top-tier companies um, we can actually get you on a portal, which was normally reserved for healthcare professionals only. And that's coming, but uh, there's a lot of things in the works. But one of the things I look for is something that's called TRACS, T R A A C S, and that is uh, trademarked, and Albion. Those are the most to my knowledge, the most absorbable minerals that there are. So we've increased the amount of Albion tracks minerals in the supplements that we sell. Uh, and that's very, very important. Um, one of the other things that I think is important is there is now a patented magnesium that will actually cross the blood brain barrier. And the research says it can take some of the, bad heavy metals out of your brain and that's called magnesium threonate magnesium l threonate and this is coupled with the tracks magnesium lysinate glycinate chelate so it's a really really good product janet gives it to me every night because she wants to uh, give my body a chance to extract the aluminum you know the cadmium the lead and the mercury that may be causing my brain not to work. And Janet's pretty good. She knows I've got dementia in my future just because of the 23 and me test. But it's like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we'll talk about it in 30 years. So you do the low-carb, low-net-carb ketogenic diet. You increase your concentration of omega-3 fats, which is we have several different fish oils here. All of them are really, really good. And me medium-chain triglycerides. Yeah, my favorite is the Omega Monopure because it's three times as strong 
and it's already been pre-digested. I'm not sure by whom, but it has <laughs> already been pre-digested. Yeah, it sounds kind of gross, but uh, so, it's real popular. Oh, and it moves the lab numbers. When we retest the lab numbers, their cholesterol is better, their lowers, triglycerides. Yeah. Um, yeah it and raises it, HDLs, the good ones, and lowers triglycerides. And if you're on a budget, you can do one and still have a very ample supply of um, fish oil. I personally do two because I'm trying to keep my mind really good. So it lasts like a month. It, it's awesome. Her mind looks good from here because mm-hmm. she's smiling. It looks great. Uh, and, and avoid the sugar. Avoid fructose that's refined. And, you know, you want to know why our kids are overweight and have ADD, ADHD. Well, look at what you're feeding them. You know, when I was a kid, you might get a soda uh, when you had an upset stomach. You know, they'd give you a 7-Up or something like that. And uh, now, you know, they drink sodas all day long. Avoid gluten, which is in casein, because that's wheat and pasteurized dairy. But dairy fat's good if it's butter. Uh, and I put a thing on Facebook the other day. Is it really gluten, or is it? Do you have a gluten intolerance, or do you have an intolerance to the poisons that they spray on it? Yep, we've been. Uh, sprayed in Alexandria, Louisiana, and Tunica, Mississippi, and it messed up our lab work as well as made us feel terrible. Uh, one of the big things is you can optimize your gut flora, and that's eating fermented foods. Uh, I think it's best to do the fermented foods and take a good probiotic. And most of the probiotics, people say, but it's good. No, it's not. You've been convinced it's good. You've got to avoid some of the buzzwords. Uh, if you saw what I was taking for probiotics the last month, uh, you'd go, oh, my God. And there's a sweet, sweet lady in Pittsburgh, Kansas. that says, thank you so much for introducing me to this probiotic. We have trouble keeping it on the shelf. They call it $350 billion, but it's made at 650 And she's going through uh, medical treatment for Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever. And uh, because the antibiotic use, which is very necessary, uh, she's using this really high potency probiotic and says it just makes her feel good. So, um, so improve magnesium. That's always good. Um, and you know, you are supposed to be eating diets that are high in B vitamins, but you never know, even in organic food, what you're getting. Uh, so I'm real, I supplement with B12, uh, activated B6, and then that 5-MTHF, which is, uh, the meth, methyl tetrahydrofolate which is just in case you have that genetic SNP then that's going to work and it works really really great uh, Janet takes a lot of panathenic acid because that is uh, the one that seems to decrease your stress and in- increase your adrenals ability to respond I'm sure it's not the stress of living with me but she takes a lot of it Boron is a missing one. Boron actually helps you make testosterone also for you guys. Um, and for women that's lost their sex drive, you know, you're probably low in boron too because that's usually a lower testosterone in a lady. And borons, I read a research thing the other day that said it's really good for people that have uh, these severe GI problems like IBS and Crohn's, that kind of thing. Um uh, I take a lot of Hooperzine A and Venpositine. And again, I do a lot of things for my mind because Janice says they need my big brain, which is not necessarily true. But I take Hooperzine A and Venpositine both. I take the man- manganese. I take all the multivitamins. I take massive amounts of fish oil. Janet takes phosphatidylcholine, which is really good to help uh, increase memory. I don't think I take that. Uh, And then zinc and copper. And, you know, one of the things we've noticed, we've got this new product, and it's for your thyroid, but it has the zinc, and it's the Trax zinc. It's got the selenium, which is really, really good, and it's got the Trax copper, the more absorbable stuff. And we've had people, and it's got a lot of other things in it, but we've had people, I put them on that for their thyroid so your thyroid would have the necessary nutrients and they say i don't know i just feel brighter and livelier mentally so folks just because you're taking it for one thing doesn't mean your body won't use it for something else 
Well, I was just uh, researching the MCTs in coconut oil, which, uh, you know, like the medium chain triglycerides. I really like those. And a lot of people don't know what those are. But uh, basically, the medium chain triglycerides are fats that are not processed by your body in the same manner as a long chain triglyceride, like a fish oil. Um, normally a fat taken into your body must be mixed with bile released from your gallbladder before it can be broken down in your digestive system. But medium chain triglycerides, she can remember it, but she can't say it, go directly to your liver, which naturally converts the oil into ketones. Uh, so it bypasses the bile entirely. Helps get you into ketosis faster. That was a question on shooting straight with Dr. Lewis, our Facebook. Ah, whatever so, that is. So y'all can join Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis if you'd like. Well, if for people that have bad gallbladders, the medium chain triglycerides or MCT oil is something that they might consider because it really makes a difference in digestion and weight loss. Yeah, yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Used to have people out of Houston that order it because they'd say we can't find it in Houston. Do you know what it is? Janice said, "Yeah, it's on the shelf." They said, "Really, Longview, Texas has it?" And well, we're kind of on the cutting edge. Yeah, that's supposed to really help a um, the cognitive status in women with Alzheimer's disease, doing the uh, coconut oil or MCT oil. Yep. So, and you know, it can be cool. as as easy as keeping your blood thinner by taking garlic. Garlic's really good for a lot of things. And you know, I've always told people cholesterol's not as big a deal as they say, uh, but it does pay to have it slick so it doesn't clog up your capillaries. Um, and I don't think cholesterol's that big a deal because that's only one part of the equation so those of you that are worried about your cholesterol go read a book called the cholesterol hoax the great cholesterol myth the cholesterol lie and then with that knowledge talk to your doctor about it because if you're knowledgeable all doctors want what's best for you so that's a good thing and and there are people that get on drugs that I like to use the term drug mugger because there was a lady that wrote a book to that effect. It's also a very good book. Many, many times the drugs you're on will deplete you of things that can lower your body's ability to have good memory. So, you know, think about reading the drug mugger book. And statin drugs are famous for giving you amnesia or memory loss as well as you know, joint pain and muscle pain. And I'm not an MD, so I don't mess with what people do medically. I just say, well, you know, talk to your MD about it because I've never seen an MD yet that didn't want what's best for you. And it's like, if you get healthy, they will give you a proper assessment of whether you can decrease your medicine or get off of it. That's something your MD should make that decision. I'm good at nutrients and lab work. I'm good at that. So, <clears throat> to, to keep active mentally, you know, that's always a good thing, but you've got to eat a good diet. Getting exercise is very, very important. And I don't like working out, but I stay really, really active. Uh, lower your sugar intake. A lady just asked me, well, if I want to, can I eat a little bit of ice cream? This is a lady whose glucose was 193, and I just gave her the look. She said, okay, I got it. Uh, avoid tobacco and you know it's best to avoid excessive alcohol so how much is excessive i think that varies um usually one drink a day is for most women's okay two drinks is almost okay for men personally i think that might be a little bit overload but uh, eh, we don't drink a lot never have uh, i'm not against it i just don't do much of it Uh, So, you know, remember things like that. Uh, The general vitamins, uh, good vitamin E, and again, there's a lot of bad vitamin E out there. Yeah, that helps with dilation of blood vessels, helps improve blood flow. Uh, The zinc is important. We've got a really dynamite new zinc in that's stronger and more absorbable. I take acetyl L-carnitine. Now, if you read the research on acetyl L-carnitine and all the studies that's been done on so many different conditions, I think everybody would jump on that and take it. Uh, I take a lot of it. Glutamine helps uh, fix the GI lining and helps that heal. We put a lot of people on that for GI problems because, folks, if you're losing memory, I tell all of you, the problem 
or a big part of the equation is always the GI tract. Think about that. Um, coenzyme Q10 is always a good one. We sell lots and lots of that. And DHEA, you know, one, just give me a few seconds to talk about DHEA. And that's one of the things we run when people have, uh, when they run the hormones. DHEA needs to be on the high side of what a healthy 30-year-old should be. The ranges get lower as you get older, not because we produce less because of age, just because we produce less because your adrenals are tired. You want to keep it on the high side because DHEA has over 150 different responsibilities for repair mechanisms in the brain and the body, and DHEA higher levels helps increase your body's resistance and immune system to help your body fight against viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungus, food allergies, and cancer. That's the facts, folks. Wow. Well, you sure have given us a lot of information, and hopefully we'll remember it all. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot half of what I was going to say, so I hope that's enough. (laughs) Well, we hope you've enjoyed this show, and we are now back in the groove. So look for us on uh, many different channels with our podcast. We're expanding that as well as everything else that we're doing. Um, We've been invited to be a uh, participant on the Business uh, Radio Network podcast show so um, we're pretty excited about that where our new show is there and um, it's going to be in a whole lot of other different places so it'll be easier to share with all your friends and yeah, um, streaker speaker i don't know what all <laughs> these things are she just puts the mic in front of me and tells me to talk but and we'll have him come up with, with a very interesting topic right here next time Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.